Hello and welcome back to the channel. So have you ever been in the situation where you're on a task record, let's, let's call it an incident, and you want to assign your incident to someone else and you know that person. So you put Bob's name in the assigned to, but you're not best friends with Bob. So you don't know what assignment group to put in there. And when you go and click on it, it just returns all assignment groups, well at least all perhaps filtered on ITIL me. So what do you do? Well in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create an advanced reference qualifier to kind of back filter the assignment group based on the person you put in the assigned to. So if you want to see how easy that is to achieve, stick around and let's go do it. That's right, I'm back with another video. So we're going to see how we can almost backfill, refine the assignment group based on the assigned to. Um, so let, let's dive in and, and, and have a look. I'm going to put some glasses on. So let's have a look. So we've got an incident form. So we're going to use an incident um, example. We're going to pick on Beth Anglin as our assigned to person as well. But let's see what it does at the minute. So out of the box, if we're on an incident, click assignment group, we get 42 groups, right? If we stick in a, um, a demo person, Beth, and then we click on assignment group, we again get 42 groups. So there's no filter. I think the simple filter, simple filter, Money. Money. on assignment group at the box is um, if the group type is ITIL or contains no types, right? It just, just filters everything. It's quite noddy filter group. So let's, let's see. Um, Let's see how we can uh, achieve a better filter. So the way we're going to achieve this is by an advanced reference qualifier. In order to do that, we're going to need to create a script include. I've already done a video on advanced reference qualifiers. Go and check that out. But let's move on to the script include, which I have already created because there's a bit of typing. It's not too heavy, um, but you don't want to see me sit here typing um, for 20 minutes. So let's just dive into that. I will put the code um, snippet link in the description, so don't worry. So I've called it assignment group filter. If you've already got like a, an assignment group utilities um, script include or a reference qualifier script include, you can consider putting it in there. But I've created a, a separate one for ease of demonstration. So I call it assignment group filter. Uh, one thing I am going to say, and I always say this all the time, put a description in. Make sure you do it. Um, You'll love yourself if you find it later on in life. So let's have a look. So we've created a function called refine assignment group. And we've done a load of scripty stuff in that function, right? And it does look quite daunting, but we're going to talk through it. We need to call this script include from our reference field. So let's go back to the incident itself. And let's go back to assignment group. So assignment group is the field that we want to put the reference qualifier on, because if we pick if we put Beth, for example, we want assignment group now to be filtered based on Beth's membership. So if Beth is a member of the groups, those are the only groups that we want to see in the assignment group field. Understand? So we want to filter that. So we go into the field itself. So there's many ways to do this, but I always do this. Right click, we go to dictionary, and we look at how it's being filtered at the minute. So we've got a reference qualifier uh, condition. Remember, this is on the task table. Okay, task table. So anything that we change here is going to be inherited from um, extended uh, on extended tables. So what extends task? Exam question, incident, problem, change, pretty much everything, right? So if we do it here, we need to be mindful that we could make a big boo boo. So just be careful. Um, I'll edit something in there. I think that there's there's definitely a, a snippet to be put in there. I oh, has a boo boo. So what we're going to do is go to a dictionary override. So there's already one for incident, but if you don't have one, you can create a new dictionary override for incident. This video is not about what dictionary overrides are, but essentially it allows you to override the dictionary for task. So you can put in uh, different ref reference qualifiers. So in this one, I'm going to, I've already got this on a, a code, uh, code a notepad. So I'm just going to pop that in there and then we'll explain what it's doing. Okay, so in this reference qualifier, I'm telling it I'm about to put some JavaScript in here. Now what I'm doing is I'm I'm initiating that script include. That's that. 
new global assignment group filter. Where do I get that from? Up here, that, API name. You could just call it using that, but I tend to use global dot because it, it kind of, um, it helps out when you're, you're crossing different scopes. No, another video. Go with either. This is initiating the script include, remember? This bit, refine assignment group. Well, what's that? What is that? Well, hang on, we can see that here, right? So that here, this is our function. This section here, we go all the way, this is our function that we've created. Script include, and within that, we've got one function, one function. So what's this then? Current dot assigned underscore two, what does that mean? So that means we're passing the assigned to, in our demo case, Beth Anglin, as a parameter into that function. Okay, script include, function, pass parameter in. Simple stuff. All right, now let's go to the script include. How are we doing for time? Let's have a look. Oh, we're all right. Oh, I should say, actually, before we, before we continue, if you haven't yet subscribed, <laughs> make sure you uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and also check out the Service Docs podcast um, that James Downs and I do. Uh, we try and release it every other Wednesday. Uh, we've been doing some lives as well for checkout, and they're quite ad hoc, actually. We don't tend to plan them, but just uh, keep your eye on. If you smash the bell icon on YouTube, then you'll get notified whenever we do a live. Right, anyway, let's carry on. So this function, what does it mean? It allows us to refine the assignment group. It's not going to pre-populate the assignment group. It's just going to filter that list. That, do you remember we had 42? It's going to kind of filter it down a bit. So let's have a look. What's the first thing we do? We are declaring a groups array, right? So we're, we're saying we're going to, we've got an empty array and we're going to put stuff in it. Now what we're saying, here is that assigned to that we pass in. Remember from the advanced reference qualifier, let's just flip back so you can see it. There we go. Right, now we're saying if that is empty, do this. So if there is no assignment group, we were going to go to the user group table, which is this list, groups, you can see what we're doing here, right? Okay, so it's this. So that's going, yes, I'm gonna do a query on the groups table. I wanna find active groups, and I'm gonna run this co um, encoded query, which is type like, and I can tell you that's the, the sys ID for ITIL, the type ITIL. Now you could filter putting a different type in there if you want to, um, you might need to based on what's on your system, but this is basically saying, return all the groups where the type contains ITIL. That's it, right? While you have one of those, or if you have one of those, then we're gonna go into our while loop. So that is kind of, if we've got something, so if we've got anything in that query, now go and loop through them. And when we find one, so let's say we've got 10, for each one of those 10, push the sys ID, get unique value, into the array that we declared in line eight. So get unique value, that's um, a out of the box method that we can use and it's just getting the sys ID of the user group. So put those sys IDs of those user groups into the group array. Simple stuff, right? So you, you can actually go to the um, to the record and then start um, do, putting the encoded query in and see what it uh, what it do to follow along. Else, right, so we've already said, if we haven't got an assignment group, do this. Else, which means obviously if we haven't got something, what's the opposite? Well, we have got something. So if we have got Beth, no, if we have got an assigned to in there, then run this logic. So this is going to a different table. This is a group member table. So this table is, let's just pick on uh, this group. Table that we're querying there. I hope I'm not over explaining this. Do put a comment in if you think I do. Um, I do tend to ramble a little bit. How, how are we doing for time? I don't know, eight minutes, okay. Right, this is, oh, <laughs> poor example. But this line here, this table here, is looking at a kind of group membership, group membership here. So you can actually go into them. So if you uh, right click um, and then go to definition, or you can go to, there you go, show definition, show data, you can go in those. Anyway, right, we want the group membership table, which is the link between the group and the user. This is saying, find me where the user is Beth, because Beth is the assigned to in our user case. And the group, so the associated group type is ITIL. So it's very similar to that. So this is return all the records where the user is the assigned to, Beth, and the group that they're assigned to is an ITIL group. Still makes sense, I'm hoping. 
Again, same logic. If it finds something, then go while through the loop. Now this time, we're still gonna to push to the array, so it's very, very similar. We're still gonna push it into the array, and what that means, we, we're gonna we're gonna push stuff into that array, right? We're gonna um, add to that array. But this time, we're gonna say the group member dot group sys ID, right? So the group member is that link between user and group. So we wanna get the group out of the group field, and we do dot, um, sorry, we do dot to string to put the sys ID in there. So it's a little bit different from get unique value, but this bit is important. If you don't do this bit, it'll just return um, the same kind of group over and over again. So just make sure you do that. With most of my stuff, I always urge, get it in there, muck about, have a play, right? In a um, subprod environment, you can do that. You can see what other things do. Anyway, so we've pushed the array. Then here, this last little bit is saying return sys ID in groups array, right? So we've, by line 38, we've got our array of sys IDs, which is a list of groups, right? It's a comma separated list of group sys IDs. That's what it is. So what we're doing here, this is simply saying, is the sys ID in that list of sys IDs that we're gonna push it, which is this. So let's go and take a look um, at how that all works together. So if we go back to our incident, in fact, I'm gonna use the history thing, right? That's great, history, incident, boom, straight back there. Did we put in the assignment group filter? Let's have a look. Okay, so we've still got 42, so perhaps we didn't save that. So we go back to our uh, reference qualifier here, and we're just gonna save that, save. Now, let's try it without putting Beth in. So we should have a, a, a smaller list. There we go, we've got eight. We've gone from 42 groups to eight. So we're now filtering. And the reason that happens is the standard out of the box filter for assignment group on task is looking at, um, as I've said before, idle and null. The query that I put in the, in the top bit of the function is just looking at idle. It's not doing any of the null stuff. I just thought I'd cut that down, right? So just be careful of that. Anyway, this is returning all the idle groups. So now when we come to put in Beth's name here this time, what we should see is that when we click on the assignment group, that little list um, that was 42 and then was eight is gonna be even less now because what's returned this time is only the groups that Beth is a member of that have the type that contains ITIL. And in this case, it's incident management or service desk. So now if I'm an agent looking to route it to Beth, perhaps Beth said assign to me, I can then select the right group to assign it to Beth. Okay, so I hope you found this simple video useful and put it to good practice. If you haven't yet subscribed, please remember to do so. Smash the bell icon, you'll get notified whenever I upload new videos just like this one, or James and I are going live on our Service Doctor podcast. Until then, I've been Russ, and this is Service Nerd.